Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Greater Life, Greater Impact. I can see people are pouring on here, so that's great. Thank you for being here. Those of you who are new to these free classes, we do them every Tuesday, every Tuesday morning, same time, same place. And if you don't have access yet, if you're not receiving the emails, you need to jump over and get onto my email list. I will type the link to that in the chat box. It is janetthurgood.com. If you go over to janetthurgood.com, you can register for these classes and receive the reminders every single Tuesday when we go live. Um, all this year, the entire year of 2022, we have been talking quite a bit, not always, but we've been talking quite a bit about how we can step into more abundance how we can manifest more miracles in our lives because we have a responsibility to do that. We have a responsibility to create a better world for ourselves and a better world for the people around us by manifesting miracles. And there, is, there are laws, certain spiritual laws that appertain to doing that. And so that's what we've been talking about all year. If you would like to get the replays of this class, it will be dumped into the uh, Manifesting Miracles and Healing the Past course on my website. Uh, I typed the link to that over in the chat box. So if you haven't been following the chat thread, please go click on the chat <clears throat> and you'll be able to find those links there. You can also just go to janetthurgood.com forward slash courses and um, find the replays to many of the classes that we have done over the last three to four years. Um, many of you are looking to get into this line of work to become a coach or a mentor or a healer. And if that is you and you do feel a calling to um, engage in helping others tap into the deeper levels of their being through quantum healing, it, that is up my alley. And that is what I teach is uh, I have a course, a program. It's a four month program for certification in quantum healing. You can get six different types of certifications. If you want more information on that, you can jump over to greaterlifegreaterimpact.com. I'll put that into the chat box as well. Greater life, greater impact, because that's what we're here to do, is create a better life for ourselves and make a bigger impact. Today, the class, um, the subject matter is being taken from a book that I have referred to you guys a multiplicity of times throughout the year. It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It. If you don't have that book, you can find free resources to get that book on YouTube. Just do a search. You can also search for the PDF version of it. It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It. It looks like this. By Florence Scoville Shin. So I'm going to be taking a lot of my comments and my notes from chapter seven of that book. I think it is profound. She, um, she talks a lot about manifesting miracles and creating abundance and how it is your birthright. You should never be ashamed of um, desiring to create that which you love in your life. No one should ever be ashamed of that. And those are the things that we absolutely should pursue because when we're pursuing the things that we love in our life, we're creating the kind of life that can spill out love onto others and um, it ultimately ripples out and creates a better world. One of the first statements that she makes in this chapter, chapter seven, on the power of love and how love is literally the answer to everything. She says that every man on the planet uh, is taking his invitation in love. So I'm going to read to you part of this first paragraph in this chapter because I think it's so profound. She says, she reminds us that it is a commandment to love. It was one of the first commandments of, of God. <laughs> Someone says, I love your hair. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
um, thank you for spreading love in this class today. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Hopefully all of you will be inspired today to go out into the world and spread more of that same kind of love. So it is a commandment to love. God told us to do it. It's in scripture. It's in Holy Writ. And when we open ourselves to love, hold on, let me let people into the class. Just a sec. When we open ourselves to love, um, we open up ourselves to uh, the divine realm. She calls it the cosmic phenomenon or the fourth dimension. And I believe that that's true. I've experienced that in my own life, that when we open ourselves up to um, loving more, giving more, loving ourselves more, um, it, it opens up a wondrous world of creation and manifestation and um, and it creates a better world for us to live in. So I want to read you this paragraph. So pardon me if I'm reading. I, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I want to share this with you because I think um, I think this is where I want to start in our discussion. If any of you guys have comments or questions or stories or things that you would like to share, don't be afraid to raise your hand in the class. Don't be afraid to type stuff into the chat and don't be afraid to unmute yourself and just interject and, and share with the rest of the group because I would love to open this up. But she says, real love is selfless. It's free from fear. It pours itself out upon the object of its affection without demanding any return. It has no attachments is what she's saying. It's, it is joy. Um, it's joy is in the joy of giving. Love is God in manifestation and the strongest magnetic force in the universe. Pure, unselfish love draws to itself its own. So what that means is that as you pour love out into the world around you, when you give a perfect love out, you receive a perfect love back in. Um, it draws to itself its own. It does not need to seek or demand. Scarcity or scarcely anyone has the faintest conception of real love because men are selfish. They're tyrannical. They're fearful. Uh, I would also add codependent and partially narcissistic because we see this in our culture. The more and more that we wander from our true selves and the more that we wander away from our connection to God and to that cosmic phenomenon that is love. Uh, men are selfish, tyrannical, fearful in his affections, thereby losing the thing that he loves. Jealousy is the worst enemy of love for the imagination runs riot, seeing the loved one attracted to another. And invariably these fears objectify if they're not neutralized. And I agree with that. So the goal is to neutralize the fear, the selflessness, the, the tyrannical nature, the codependent nature, the clinginess that we have to things and people so that we can bring ourselves into a place of neutrality and thereby choose to act in the nature of what we really are, which is love. She says, you can never receive that which you have never given. And so if you want to receive a perfect love, then that's something that you really need to focus on. You really need to um, put awareness on how much love are you giving out in the first place? If you're demanding and seeking for love from people around you, and if other people have hurt or, or offended you or caused you to feel guilt and shame or bitterness, or maybe you've lost a love, and you feel grief. So by staying in those negative energies, that's what's going to continue to return back to you. So I love that she says, you can never receive that, you, that which you have never given. So give a perfect love and you will receive a perfect love. Love that. Um, perfect yourself. She says, she shares a story in this um, in this chapter of a woman who feared the losing of her lover. He had uh, taken his attention and focused it on somebody else. And she went into jealousy and fear and anger and rage. And um, the answer, Florence was a coach. She was a mentor. And so her, her response to that was, you need to give him love. 
And her, the woman's response was, no, I won't bless him unless I know where he is, she said. Um, then Florence's response to the woman was, well, then that's not love. That's not real love. If all you're doing is expecting him to gift you love, but you're in a state of bitterness, that isn't love. That's manipulation. So as you are one with God, she says, you are one with the love which belongs to you by divine right. So how do we do that when we've been hurt, when we've been offended, when we've been wronged by other people? How do we put ourselves in a state of, of loving so that we can then have access to the love that is ours by divine right? How do we do that? I would submit to you that it's necessary to learn how to put yourself into a state of neutrality. So one of the things that we're going to do today is I want you to, on your, if those of you who grabbed a pencil and a paper, like I said, um, I want you to write down on your piece of paper the name of someone, just pick one, you can do more later, but just pick one, the name of one person in your life who has harmed you, who has wronged you, who has um, ignored you, betrayed you, belittled you. Um, not given you the love that you felt you deserved from them or wanted from them. Maybe they've let you down. Maybe it's somebody that just kind of bugs you or annoys you. Maybe it's someone who has legitimately harmed you or wronged you or abused you. Um, write one name down on your piece of paper. And I want you to focus on that name. And I want you to focus on the wrong that was done to you. I'll give you a minute. And I want you to pay attention to what does that feel like in your body? Where do you feel the physical effects of the feeling you feel about this person, the feeling you feel towards them? Where are you harboring that? While you're doing that and focusing in on picking that name, writing it down, Writing down what you feel inside your body and where you feel it. Maybe there's a heaviness. If there's grief or guilt, you might feel heavy on your heart. If there's sadness, it might also feel heavy on your heart. If there is um, bitterness, that also might feel heavy on your heart. If the person took something from you, like your free will, you might feel that in the gut. If it affected the way that you see yourself and the way that you think other people see you, like it affected your identity, you might feel some hotness or redness in the face. So just notice where you're feeling it. Write that down. One of the things that Florence says in this chapter on love is that when you are no longer disturbed by the cruelty of another, he will, they will cease to be cruel. As you are attracting it through your own emotions. So oftentimes we will attract to us lessons that want to and need to be learned for our highest good and for our growth. Sometimes we will attract to us relationships or circumstances or challenges or affliction or adversity based on the emotional, um, unresolved emotional environment inside of our soul. So just be thinking about that. <clears throat> um, she talks about a brotherhood in India and one of the things that they do when they greet each other is they say, I salute the divine within you. So when they go out into the world and they're, they're looking at animals and nature and the jungle and other human beings around them, whether they're good, bad, right, or wrong, they say, as they look into the eye of another, I salute the divine within you. I love that. I actually used that a couple of times yesterday. I sent some messages out to people that I was actually feeling love towards 
Uh, oh, Carla says, what is the name of the book? It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scoville Shin. You can Google it. You can also find it on um, YouTube. You can find it on Audible. It's free. Uh, what? Or you can just it again. Sorry. Oh, it's the it's called the game. No, no, the chapter. Oh, the chapter. We're on chapter seven Thank on you. love. You can actually get the free downloadable PDF of it on Google. Just type it into the into the search. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And so she talks about these these people in India who when they greet their fellow men, they say, I salute the divine within you. And I love that. I loved it so much that I sent three messages yesterday to three people that I actually really do love and shared that with them. I, sub I salute the divine within you. I submit that uh, a challenge to each of us that we send that out to people that maybe we love a little less, people that we feel bitterness towards. Hey, thanks for sharing the link. Appreciate that, Sarah. Um, as this woman that she was mentoring and coaching started to do that more by blessing her, um, her ex-companion or the companion that had wandering eyes or a wandering heart, <clears throat> she said she found that the woman became more poised as she let go of the bitterness inside of herself. And um, she replied, uh, that she started to bless this gentleman. And Florence's response to her is, now that is real love. That's what real love is. There's a great, great book. And I, I actually recommend this book. I never read the whole book. I only read the first three chapters, but I feel like that was enough for me. Um, it's by Deepak Chopra. It's called The Path to Love. I can, I can put it into the chat box called The Path to Love. Deepak Chopra. Great book. And in the first couple of chapters of that book, he talks about how we've been conditioned in our world to believe that love is when you're seeking for love in your life, especially romantic love like to, to find your person. What we do, what we've been, we've been conditioned to do is go out into the world and look for the person who can make you feel good about yourself. And then what happens is we enter into a committed relationship. And when that person can no longer make us feel that way, then we have to hate them <laughs> or divorce them or leave them or shun them or whatever. And he said, that's not love, that's manipulation. That's codependency. That is not the epitome of love. The epitome lo of love is when a person or two people have learned how to find the love that is them inside of themselves, that comes from a godly place, that comes from the divine, and they are that love. And then they go out into the world and find someone to share that love with in a vulnerable way, and they open themselves up completely vulnerable and surrendered to that person, sharing the best parts of them with that person because there's no neediness. They don't, they don't feel that they deserve to be gifted love by that person because they are the love that they need. When you go out into the world and, and connect with others in that way, opening yourself up, being completely vulnerable, completely surrendered, and exposed to that person. That's ecstasy. And he said, most people will never experience ecstasy because they're not willing to be vulnerable. We have too many walls and we call them boundaries. In the name of establishing healthy boundaries, we put up walls around ourselves to protect ourselves. When the reality is you don't need to protect yourself if you are love. So now I know that people are going to message me and say, wait a minute, that's not true. We do need healthy boundaries. And to a degree, to a degree you do, but not to, not to turn those boundaries into walls. And sometimes we do that by human nature. 
Okay, so what ended up ultimately happening to this woman as she started to release the bitterness and the harboring the hurt that was going on inside of her and blessing him, uh, they ended up reconnecting and ultimately got married. <laughs> so the love that she deserved by divine right came back to her because she was willing to put that love out into the universe and pour it onto him. Whether she received anything back or not there was there was no attachment there was no expectation she just she just put it out there um okay she also says no man is your enemy no man is your friend every man is your teacher i loved that i loved that concept learn what man has to teach you um when you do when you start to learn what men and women have to teach you whether they're good bad right or wrong whether they're enemies or friends that's ultimate freedom because really all the people that come into your life are just mirroring and reflecting back to you something that's going on within you go ahead carly you have comment so <clears throat> being vulnerable with someone is very interesting and difficult but what's really interesting and fun and difficult to do is being vulnerable with your spouse but choosing to be in the buff and being vulnerable and having a really in-depth conversation yeah. and doing it deliberately and intentionally yes yeah wow that's powerful Man, we could go even deeper than that. Um, I'm getting ready to actually teach a class on intimacy and sacred sexuality uh, where we're going to talk about some of those things and how couples can really create intimacy in their marriage by, um, by establishing vulnerability and what that looks like. So there, there are ways to actually create that environment. Now, yeah. vulnerability doesn't mean you're exposing yourself to being hurt. You, in order to be open and vulnerable with another human being, especially your spouse, then there's some inner work that has to take place first before you do that, or you're probably going to get wrecked. And the inner work that has to take place is you've got to learn to let go of expectations, let go of needing, wanting that person to gift you the feelings you're looking for you've got to go inside and connect with where those feelings really ultimately come from which is god and your higher self really when you learn how to connect with god and your higher self in such a way that god gifts you all of those feelings that you're looking for you don't there is no neediness anymore a person can kind of step on you or step on your toes or do something that to 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 the world might seem offensive but because you're so grounded and you're so stable in your sovereignty you look at the other person and say there's no need for forgiveness you don't owe me anything I, I am a being of love, so I don't need anything from you. I appreciate that you're, that you're putting that energy out there, but I don't need apologies because I don't need anything from you. But I will exchange love with you, for sure. Now, if somebody really grossly, in an exaggerate, exaggerated way, harms you or wrongs you, you can still apply this principle to some degree, whatever degree that you're capable of applying it by removing expectation. Um, so in many ways, the woman's, the, the woman's lover that we were talking about was teaching her selfless love. Selfless love is real love. It is charity. It is the highest form of love. And nothing can compare to that nothing um that selfless version of love is the love that we're all seeking and sooner or later we must all learn it is what she says i thought it was interesting too that she focuses on suffering she talks about suffering um, how you know sometimes when you open yourself up to being vulnerable she talks about how um suffering is usually a violation of spiritual law 
usually suffering is a violation of spiritual law. I loved this quote, and I'm going to share it with you. She says, suffering is not necessary for man's development. It is the result of violation of spiritual law, but few people seem to be able to rouse themselves from their soul's sleep without it. Meaning we can't spiritually awaken until we've had some sort of deep suffering to help us come back to ourselves, to come back home and wake up to who we really are. So, oh my gosh, such a powerful concept. She says, you know, when we're happy and everything's going great in our lives, uh, that, that ultimate um, contentment or non-resistance or just plain old happiness can open ourselves up to more suffering because um, we suffer because of a lack of appreciation for what we have. And we, be we, we come to expect more of that same happiness to be gifted to us by the world around us and other people. Go ahead, Sharice has a comment. I think a lot of people have beliefs um, within their DNA stored there that um, suffering brings me closer to God. And that, that's a huge one. I see it a lot with my clients that I work on, um, that we actually keep attracting suffering into our lives because we feel that we need, this is how we get closer to God. This is how we, it's through our trials, our tribulations and our afflictions. And I'm going to be holier at the end of it. And there's a lot of, Mm, yeah, there's a lot of perceptions that are skewed there because of these beliefs. So uh, something just to look into yourself. If you find yourself attracting a lot of um, negative experiences in your life. Yeah. And really the suffering comes in the way that we interpret our experiences. That's really where the suffering lies. An experience is just an experience. It's an activity that's going on. Whether you are being beaten or raped or stabbed or whatever it might be, or maybe just somebody is speaking evil against you and towards you, or someone has maybe just bothered you. Uh, suffering is the way that we choose to interpret what the activity is that's taking place. When a person has completely ascended to the degree that they know themselves in all ways and they are completely and totally in a state of connectedness to their higher self and to God, such as Christ was on the cross, then it's not really a state of suffering anymore. It's just a deeper, expanded awareness. You can see how he was able to, in that moment, forgive those who were perpetuating these activities onto him. And he was able to do that because he was aware of who he really is. So there comes a point in our, in our spiritual progression where suffering, the need to suffer, actually goes away. And like Sharice says, it is, a, it is born of a belief a violation of spiritual law, and a misinterpretation of the activity that's going on in the present moment. Um, and a good example of that is um, uh, Dr. Viktor Frankl. He was a psychologist, and he survived several different death camps over the course of four years uh, during World War II. He was there in Auschwitz. And he witnessed a lot of suffering. He experienced a lot of suffering. But he said, I started to observe. He went into observation mode. He, started, he said, I started to observe that those people who suffered the most were people who believed they had nothing left to live for, that everything had been taken from them. So there's no more meaning. There's no more purpose for living. There's no more purpose in life. So he said, the remedy is to create meaning out of your circumstance and your situation. How do we do that? So some things to think about as you go within and start identifying with what's going on inside of here. How am I interpreting the world around me? And a really good way to help you interpret better is, you know, when you've been harmed or wronged by someone else, just remember hurt people hurt people. <laughs> people who are in fear 
bitterness, resentment, shame, rage, guilt, suffering are typically the people who will hurt people. So hurt people hurt people. And so your perpetuators, those who have projected evil onto you or hurt or suffering or discomfort onto you in any way, what if you could see the hurt that's within them? And where did that come from? Were they abused? Were they mistreated? Were they neglected? Were they abandoned? What, what happened to create such hurting that a human being would treat another human being in such a grossly horrific, evil, um, unaware, non-present way? <clears throat> you know, as human beings, what do we want from other human beings? We want to be seen. We want to be understood. We want to be heard. We want to be validated. Man, if you can provide that for another human being and say, I see you, I hear you, I love you, I'm here for you, I get you, I understand what you're going through. If you can provide that for another human being, that is the epitome of love. People will never forget it. You know, I had uh, opportunities to serve young youth and young children in my church culture years ago uh, when I served in my church community. And I had people come to me years, 20 years later, who said, you know what? I, I loved you so much. I was so grateful for you as my mentor, my teacher at that time in my life, because I knew that you loved me and I wanted to be there because I felt loved. So this is the epitome of how we can pour love out onto others. And as you pour that out into the universe, guess what? It will come back to you in full measure. In fact, if, if not more than what you put out into the universe. So let's write this down on our pieces of paper for a minute. You wrote down a name, hopefully. Just pick one, but I want you to think about for a minute, how have you noticed um, when you are unloving to the world around you? Have you noticed those times when you are projecting your hurt and your pain out? Even if it's just, I have this story, I was wronged. I was perpetrated upon this. These are how people are treating me and I need to tell the story. And I get that sometimes that's how we process, but be careful about, um, be careful about how much you are addicted to your story. So I get that processing is important and sometimes you do need to just talk it out, right? But be careful how addicted you become to the actual story of pain and hurt and suffering. Um, don't use your story for those purposes. Use it for the purpose of processing, releasing, letting go. Um, so let's go through a forgiveness exercise then. I want you to look at the name on your paper and I want you to get into your body. Let's take our awareness and our attention and just go within. When you go within, let's slow the breath down, slow your thinking down. Take a big breath in, big breath out. Drop your shoulders when you exhale. Do that two or three times. Think about the inside of your body. Go inside and just be. As you breathe deeper, I want you to go deeper down into your body. Relaxing, softening, letting go. Let's look, look in your body for places where there's tension. Usually shoulders hold tension. Usually your upper gut, like where the sternum is right here, uh, the belly, the arms, the face, 
Look for where the pockets of tension are in you. What muscles are like this? Are, are the muscles that are holding your eyeballs in, are those tight? Are the muscles that allow you to swallow, is that tight? Is your jaw? Open it up, stretch it out. Stretch out your face. Big breath in, big breath out. Do not hold your breath. In fact, I'm going to invite you to just return the breath for breath. Breathing in, breathing out. And just keep that repetitive motion of breath in, breath out, going. Slow your thinking down with your breathing. I want you to focus on the breath. I want you to focus on the direction the energy sweeps when you breathe. And let's just invite that energy to start underneath your feet on the inhale and sweep up the body and out the top of your head. And when you exhale, it sweeps back into your body and down out through your feet into the ground. Sweeping up, down, out your feet, letting go of tension and resistance. This is you becoming more aware of you. Letting go of the parts that aren't you. Drop your shoulders, relax your face, get into your body. I want to invite you to drop your attention now down below your heart down inside your body. Put your attention at the base of the spine. It's a connecting point to your higher self. Keep breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Connect, think about your tailbone. Connecting to your higher self, becoming more aware of your higher self. And all you gotta do is just think about your tailbone and be. Be, be that being that's looking through your eye holes. Be that being that's animating this body. Notice it, pay attention to it. What is that energy? What is that essence that shines through the cells and the material of your body? Who are you in there? Who are you? What is this energy? What is this essence? And now we're going to look for the feeling of expansion. So dropping down, 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 down into your body with your awareness. I want you to push that light out on the exhale. Expand it out big. Fill up the room that you're in with it, with your, with your essence, your presence. It's like you stepped into the center of the sun, so shine in front of you, behind you, above you, below you. And now that you're in center, keep breathing, keep expanding, keep softening the tightness and the tension in your muscles and in your body. And I want you to say out loud, I bless John or whoever the name is on your paper. I bless Lisa or whoever it is. I bless them. Say their name. I bless them. Say it a couple times until you can feel the energy inside of you shifting a little bit. It changes just a little bit. I bless them. Ooh, there we go. Next, you're going to say out loud a couple times, I release John from my suffering, or the name that you have on your paper. I release John from my suffering. I release John from my suffering. Now, if in order for you to truly release that pain and suffering that is your own, it's your suffering, you could say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Let's first say that phrase, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. Say it to your higher self.
say it to John. I love you, John. I'm sorry for whatever is going on inside of me in this moment as I think about you. Please forgive me for that. I'm letting it go. Thank you. Thank you for the learning. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for teaching me what love isn't so that I can now move in the direction of what love is. Thank you for that. Thank you for the contrast. Thank you for the soul expanding experience because you know it is. Now, we're going to say, I forgive John or say their name. I forgive. Now, forgiveness is you choosing to let go of your own feelings and your own suffering and your own story and your own gunk. It's your gunk. You created the gunk. You may not be to blame for the gunk, but you still created the gunk. Breathe in, breathe out. Nice, big, deep breaths inside your body. Put your awareness at the base of the spine and just say, I forgive, John. Next, I want you to say, I bless myself. I bless myself. I release myself from this suffering. And I forgive myself for carrying it. You could also do the same Ho'oponopono exercise where you say to yourself, I love you, self. I'm sorry that I was holding on to this bitterness and this energy that isn't serving me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You can say it to God. I love you, God. I'm sorry I didn't see you. I'm sorry I didn't focus on you when I should have. Please forgive me. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now, lastly, I bless all the witnesses. I release all the witnesses. And I forgive unconditionally. Okay. People get what they want and then feel very much hurt <laughs> when they are asking for more bitterness and more suffering and more shame and more, su more of that suffering energy. They get what they want and then they, um, they feel very much hurt by it and they blame it on other people. So I feel bad, I feel sad, and I'm blaming this on them. So now just shift that energy, take some big breaths in, release it from your body, notice where the tension might be, and see if you can use the breath to just continue letting that go. Um, something interesting that Florence said in this chapter was she talked about men and women in loving relationships, in marriage, often what will happen when a man becomes bitter, indignant, controlling, um not a good provider he kind of loses his will to live when usually that happens when the woman that he's connected to becomes indifferent and she becomes critical then and ceases to inspire him when that happens then he becomes the version of himself that um she no longer is in love with and it's not his fault it's not her fault but it but it does rob them of coming into perfect harmony with love <clears throat> so what happens to him is he misses that stimulus of their early relationship and he becomes restless and unhappy so what is the solution as women we can't, I say this to women because there's more women on here than men, but as women, we can support him. We can inspire him. We can um, witness the divinity within him, witness the divine inside of him. We can show him how amazing he is and vice versa. Men, you can do that for your women. I think men are actually hardwired to do that for their women. when. When the woman is more in touch 
with herself as well. So let's talk about, we have just enough time, about 15 minutes to cover in the last part of the chapter, chapter seven, she talks about some principles of love that I think are really powerful. We're not gonna have a chance to really go deep into all of these, but let's just talk about 14 principles of abundance and love. Principle number one, no man is a success in business unless he loves his work. People say that all the time, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, but you'll get paid well because money follows joy and bliss. Principle number two, no man can attract money if he despises it. So if you, if, if you are someone who judges people who have money, who are wealthy, and you think, I don't want to be like them, they're, they're too selfish or whatever. If you're judging it because, and you start to despise the people who have money, then you will despise money and you'll, you'll not um, attract it. Principle number Three. So now it's not about loving money. It's about loving what you do love. It's about filling your life with love and the resources to support that abundance around it will be attracted to you. Principle um, number three, uh, we must be in harmony with a thing in order to attract it. So if you, let's say you're walking by a store and you see a dress, I'm speaking for myself. You walk by a store, you see this beautiful dress and you say, oh, I love that dress. Oh my gosh, I love that. So that's so beautiful. Then you become magnetic to it because you're in a state of harmony with it because you are in love. And so fill yourself, fill your world with things that you love. Notice more the sunset, the sunrise, the clouds, the sky, the things that are already present with you in your life and be appreciative of the world around you and the things that you can point out already in the moment now that you do love. Oh, I love this song. Oh, I love that sunset. Oh, I love her hair. <laughs> like Katie said this morning, right? <clears throat> Principle number four, Money <clears throat> is God in manifestation as freedom from want and limitation. Money is God in manifestation as in the form of freedom from want. If you can put yourself in a state of <clears throat> not wanting or needing, letting go of wanting something so that you can have it, then you become magnetic to it. <clears throat> Stacy says, how do we do that for our husbands when we feel like everything else is already too heavy? Woo, then you have some healing to do, some inner healing to do. Um, I recommend hire a coach, get with a friend who can help you walk through the hurts, the sadness, the bitterness, the pain, the suffering, the heaviness that you're carrying. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> have somebody help you reach out. Um, you can even reach out to me. I'll, I'll help you walk through some of that and let go of it. So when you get to the place where you can finally let go of your heaviness and your pain and your suffering um, and your need to suffer, then you start to become a person who no longer requires that being mirrored back to you in your life. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. So reach out. Uh, there, are, there are other people here in this class too that I'm sure would be happy to work with you and walk you through maybe some, some exercises to help you. I personally am one of them. Reach out to me on Facebook if you'd like and we can jump on a call and, and I'll walk you through. Uh, principle number five has to do with the flow and motion of, of money or abundance or... Um, creation or the energy of prosperity. God wants to prosper you. He, God wants to support. In fact, the universe that God has constructed around us has no other purpose other than to support you and to fill in the gaps of where you're at mentally, emotionally, physically. So as you begin to step into flow and circulation, 
by giving you will receive it, it it's like a boomerang that which you cast out the net that you cast out that's exactly what's going to come back so there has to be circulation so what she talks about in the in this chapter is that if you're hoarding and saving and that's all you're ever going to do um it'll be the downfall of of your abundance now it's not to say that saving is bad it isn't but if that's all you do with your resources and your abundance and your what god has blessed you with then more of it can't come back in because you've dammed up the flow you've created a a dam and a reservoir where it's just gonna kind of pool but eventually it'll evaporate so there has to be flow things have to if you want more resources give go out into the world and give and that will open up the floodgates for it to flow back in through the back door um hoarding and saving ceases flow principle number six she talks about is let it go freely let your resources let your abundance be willing to give openly and freely uh, don't hold on to things. Don't cling to the things that you have. Don't cling to the neediness of, I need to have a full bank account so I can feel safe. I need to have these possessions so that I can feel whatever you feel from them. Be willing to give. Sometimes it's powerful to take that which you're most clinging to, whether it's an object or whether it's a pile of money or cash, and give it away and see what that does to opening the flow of abundance principle number seven love of money is the root of all evil that is truth money isn't the root of all evil the love of money is the root of all evil um, money in itself is good it's beneficial it can be used for perpetuating good but it can also be used for destructive purposes um, it can be hoarded and saved uh, it can be considered more important than people or love um when it is considered more important than people or love then it brings disease and disaster and suffering and lack and limitation and emptiness empty bank accounts um principle number eight follow the path of love and all things are added for god is love god is supply focus on the path of love how do we do that focus on god god is love god is supply follow the path of selflessness oh sorry she says selfishness and greed and then the supply will vanish when you go into selfishness and greed and hoarding and saving then the prosperity and the abundance will vanish principle number nine the law of use what you have don't hoard you don't need five million pairs of new socks you can't use them all give away what you cannot use to someone who needs it or desires it don't throw it away give it away uh she talks about a woman who really really loved necklaces and jewelry and she would buy these beautiful ornate necklaces and then she'd wrap them in tissue paper and put them in a box or in a drawer and she had over 67 of these beautiful necklaces she couldn't possibly use them all and so as a result um what ended up happening to her was um she became paralyzed and she couldn't she could no longer use her her idols that she had been worshiping she could no longer use she was paralyzed from holding on to things and eventually she was considered incapable of looking after her stuff she had to turn it over to somebody else um learn the laws of love learn the laws of love it's very valuable she says so um man in ignorance of the law brings about his own destruction when you don't understand the laws of love and how they work and how they work in your favor you can bring about your own suffering and lack and limitation and destruction and disease um all disease all unhappiness come from the violation of the laws of love man boomerangs um of hate 
resentment, criticism, all that stuff comes back to you laden with sickness and sorrow. So, and I believe that's true. I believe that in healing, as, as I've worked with my clients over the years, I've noticed that when you go inside of the body and you tap into that energy inside of you that feels so heavy and painful and discouraging and frustrating and, and sorrowful, you tap into that energy and then return it to love. Oftentimes what happens is the body now is in a place where it can fix itself because it's designed to resolve its own problems. Um, so healing in many, in many instances is a return to love. Healing relationships, bank accounts, bodies, it's all the same. It's a return to love. Number 10, uh, do what fills you with love. Be filled with love. It's a law of the universe. Fill yourself up with love and that which you love will come to you because like that boomerang, um, that which is divinely yours to love, that resonates with your soul, has no choice but to come in and to support where you're at. So do what fills you with love. Be full of love when you do it. Eleven, see the divine in others. We've talked about this a lot today. We've referred to it four or five times. But see the divine in others, in other people. Salute the divinity in the men and women in your world that you love and even the people that you don't. And if you can't see divinity within them, then, then you're lacking seeing the divinity in yourself. So come to know yourself a little better. 12, neutralize the poison by doing something kind. So when someone has harmed you or wronged you, if the wrong cannot be righted, if there is no way to resolve the issue or the wrong in your life, then go out into the world and perpetuate something that is right and good and loving. Be in that kindness, be in that love, and be present with somebody else who needed what you didn't get. Do something kind. 13, let go of low-level emotions and ego. I added that. But let go of your suffering, let go of your bitterness, let go of the sadness, work your way through those emotions, and finally find a way to return to love. The mortal mind loves to hang on to its griefs and its regrets and its stories. So you've got to get out of your mind and into your body, just like what we did. Notice how I had you put your focus and your attention in your body, how I had you breathe and soften and release and let go. You looked for tension, you looked for resistance, and you found a way to let that go. Um, you know, there is a thing called, she, she refers to this, and I've seen it. I've seen it in my own life and in my own mothering. She calls it mother fear. <laughs> mother fear is a real thing. When you project your own mother fear onto your children, you actually are creating an environment where fear will be manifest in in their lives in some way, shape, or form. They'll get an illness, they'll, they'll have an accident, something will happen to them that will be the manifestation of your fears projected onto them. So stop it. <laughs> stop fearing for your children or people that you care about. Fear pictures vividly the disease or the situation feared, and these pictures objectify and they will manifest in your life somewhere. Um, fears do manifest themselves. So be careful where you're putting your attention and how you're interpreting what you're experiencing and how, in what way can you return yourself, your inner self back to a place of love. Happy is the mother who can say sincerely that she puts her child in the hands of God. Wow. And I would also add to that not just putting your child in God's hands, but your circumstances, your external circumstances, your children, your loved ones, your friends, your family, your enemies, <laughs> put it all, your job, the things that you love, put it in God's hands and let him work out the details of how those things can become um, resolved or find a resolution in their journey. Give your children or loved ones or your job over to God and return yourself back to love. 
Number 14, this is the last one. I think it's really powerful. When you put yourself into that state of love, inner love, finding that inner love inside of yourself, like just putting yourself back into a state of neutrality is a powerful way to do that by releasing the resistance, going inside, putting your awareness in there, breathing, softening, surrendering, relaxing, letting go. That's how you do it. That's how you find your way back to a place of neutrality. And then when you're there in neutrality, choose love. Focus on something you're grateful for. Focus on something that you that you do love or someone that you do love. Watch a good movie, read a good, elevating, uplifting book, go out into nature and tell the world and God how grateful you are for this beautiful world that we live in. Affirm righteousness. Um, affirm that you're in the right place doing the right things. You're right where you're supposed to be doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And so are the people in your life. Nobody is where they're not supposed to be. Even if you think that it's good, bad, right, or wrong, we're all right where we're supposed to be doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Learning. We're learning. We're getting experience. We're seeing the resistance. We're seeing contrast for the development and the expansion of our soul. So wake up. Wake up to the love that is within you. Be grateful for the lessons that you're learning, the expansion of your soul. And affirm that righteousness within you. She says, so man, uh, wow, my eye is really going crazy right now. So man is his brother's keeper in thought. Uh, and every man should know that the thing he loves dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. That's from Psalm 91. I recommend you go read that. Go read through the whole thing. Psalm 91. Um, perfect love casteth out all fear. He that feareth is not made perfect in love, and love is the fulfilling of the law. So that's the end of my notes. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Come to know the laws of love and your, your life will be blessed abundantly, richly blessed because of it. All right, I'm going to open up the mics now. We are at the top of the hour, but I'm going to give you a little bit of extra time. If people have any comments or remarks or questions or how did the walking through the guided meditation help you to release what you were feeling about that person that we wrote on a piece of paper? How do you feel now? Do you feel more neutral? Do you feel better? Can you honestly put yourself in a state of love regardless of that person now? Can you see the divinity in them? Okay, share. The mic is yours. I'll give you guys just a minute to be thinking about what you might want to share. Hi, Janet. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I um, have a lot of for sister. She does not see there's some things that are. Ooh, when we did this, I was like, but I still don't like her. <laughs> Totally got to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so just go through it again and again and again. Even if you have to repeat a hundred times throughout the day, I love you. I love the highest version of you. I love the divinity of you. Please forgive me for what's going on inside of me. Thank you. So just keep repeating until you start to feel that energy shift and change. It's all about you. It's all about the energy that's going on inside of you. It's not really even about them. It's about you releasing the suffering. You can stay in a place of bitterness if you want to, but it's going to canker your soul and create some kind of cancer somewhere. Or yeah, I felt it when you said, you know, where are you holding that negative? I felt it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's why my legs have been hurting so much. Mm -hmm. And I, and 
yeah, I, I'm not that it's new, I, I can't, but I can, I can relate to that. It's yeah. like, wow, I gotta quit focusing on the negative things I don't like about her. Yes, we do. We do. You owe it to yourself to do that because why would you carry around bitterness that's just going to make your legs hurt all the time? Why would you carry? Go ahead. I just said, that's crazy to do that. I know it. <laughs> it is. It's insanity. And so we, this, this comes with responsibility and awareness, but this is a part of waking up. We, as human beings, we're responsible for how we perceive the world around us. We've been largely lied to in this yeah. world that we live in. This world is filled with deception and lies. And so if you want to wake up, this is the price that is to be paid is awareness. Be aware of what you've put inside of your body. Be aware of what you can do to release and let go. And then choose to put yourself in a state where you can feel better. You, you deserve to feel good. You deserve to be in love. Well, thank you for today. I need to work on it a whole lot more, but thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. And I also recommend, Karen, don't work on it. Play with it. Make it, make okay. it lighter. Make it fun. Work is hard. It feels heavy, but play is fun. It feels like exploration and, and curiosity and wonder. And so go into a state of, I wonder what this would feel like if I moved into love. Go ahead, Carla. I was just going to say, I had an interesting experience this last weekend and the person was like the, it reminded me from the cat from Alice in Wonderland. And so when you said to pick a person, I picked that person that reminded me of the cat and it was, it was a very lovely experience feeling my body shift through that. And bringing it back into a space of love. And I know in the cat in Alice in Wonderland, the cat is just always trying to teach lessons. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. So do you want to feel better? Do you want to have better health? Do you want your skin to be glowing? Do you want yourself do you want your soul to be vibrant do you want to feel alive do you want to have less pain and suffering and brain fog and um, bitterness in your body do you want those things do you really want to be full of vitality and energy then fill yourself with love you deserve it you deserve to know yourself and and we all are love so as you come to know yourself in all ways you come to realize you are the love that you think you need it doesn't it does it's not going to be gifted to you by your mom your dad your spouse your kids it's not their job to gift you love you are love you are at the essence and at the core of who you are without all the resistance without all the bitterness without all the stuff you're hanging on to when you let go of all of that and release it, you start to realize, oh, I am the light that I'm looking for. I am the love that I'm looking for. I am the security, the stability, the peace. I am that stuff. That is me. And you deserve to be known in that way. Anybody else? I have one more thing. Um I've always felt guilty for wanting more, wanting to be um, financially better off. And I don't know why. And I don't know how to get rid of that. Yes. Because, you know, why, should, why would God want us to always struggle financially to always be on the edge of repossession, you know? <laughs> yes. God does not want you to want. He desires for you to receive so there's a big difference in the energy. Can you, feel, can you feel the difference between the word wanting and the word receiving with gratitude? So open yourself up to receiving, let go of wanting. So I would say to you, if I was working with you in a session, um, we were clearing this out of your body, I would say, can you, I would get you centered first. 
And then I would ask you, can you let go of wanting that? I would actually ask you, what do you want? It's important that we get clear on the things that fill us with love, the things that we desire the most, the things that we would choose if we were literally standing in front of a smorgasbord of all the things that we would choose, what would you choose? And can you let go of wanting so that you can have it? Most people can't let go of wanting. And if you're in the energy of wanting and needing, you will never have it. You will always push it away. You will always be in an energy of want. And so God does not want you to want. He, he desires for you to receive So, and there's a way to put yourself into that state. It's a matter just of what we did, letting go of that heavy, dingy, wanty, needy energy in the body, letting go of that and just put yourself back into a state of, I choose, I decide, I love, I'm grateful for. When I, when I, and I, I practice this in my daily life. Every time I go into a parking lot, I love parking right up front because I love being right by the door, especially when I come out. I don't want to have to walk a long way. So I always say, thank you. Thank you for my perfect parking spot right up front. And you know what? I always get one. Always, without fail. And usually if I don't see one, there's almost always, right as I get up to the front, someone is just barely backing out right in the nick of time for me to pull in. It happens every single time. So if I can practice on parking spots that I don't, I mean, I care about it, but it's not something that's a big momentous thing in my life. If I can practice on that, I can interpret that same energy of thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I receive this. I desire this. I love this. I'm ready for this. Do you see the energy is different than I want, I need, I don't have it. So um, putting yourself in the right energy where you can attract it divinely to you is one way that you can put yourself into a state of love. Putting yourself into love is what causes you to open yourself up to receiving. Thank you. So practice, practice on little things. All right. Um, I don't see anybody else's hand. I don't see any other comments. So we're going to go ahead and close the class down. Thank you guys for being here so much. I really appreciate it. Just a final uh, reminder to all of you who want to come to our next week's class. Um, scroll back up through the comments. You have just a couple of seconds to do that. There are links there um, where you can register for these free weekly classes. We do it every Tuesday. If you want the reminders emailed to you into your inbox, just go to janetthurgood.com. Don't see a link here. I'll put it right here. Janetthurgood.com. Um, and then you can get yourself onto my mailing list if you're not on my mailing list already. I send those broadcasts out usually the night before or the morning of our classes every Tuesday. So if you want to participate in that, you can. If you feel like you would like uh, to go deeper and you would like to have some mentoring, um, you can also reach out to me privately through Facebook and, um, and I can get you connected to either someone that can help you or even myself, because I do mentoring as well. If you're interested in certifying as a quantum healer, reach out to me or visit greaterlifegreaterimpact.com. You guys have a blessed rest of your day. Just remember next year, um, this, this year was all about manifesting miracles and we're going to continue doing that to up until about November, but the next year, we're going to focus all on spiritual sovereignty and spiritual awakening, and it's going to be amazing, even better than two years ago when we did it. So thanks for being on here. You guys have a blessed rest of your day. Take care. Bye.